So it's a very cold October day. The uh, snow has not yet started to fall, but you all feel the chill the same. You have been chain ganged around the waist, made to uh, push a large wagon, which contains uh, various pieces of detritus and garbage the jackals have collected, along with your personal possessions, which are being kept in several large storage trucks. Uh, around each of your necks is an explosive bomb collar used to keep you in line. The jackals have not been very uh, accommodating. In fact, just several days ago, they killed one of the additional, one of the other people they had captured and ate them. That's lovely. They offered some of the meat to you to help you keep your strength so you could continue pulling their shit. Did any of you take them up on it? No, I did no. not. No. Uh, good old Ben did not. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I'm not here to judge anybody else. Right. Scarfed it down. No, no. I, no. I mean, I, I lied. I'm going to judge you incredibly harshly. You uh, find yourselves traveling down an old and uh, sort of time-weathered, beaten uh, highway. Uh, Some of the rusted-out signs that you've passed by uh, indicate that it was once called Airport Road. It's in a small uh, country town nestled in a valley just outside of Boulder. The reason it is called Airport Road becomes apparent as you approach a airfield to your right. The airfield has a statue out front, one of the few things that's truly remaining. Most of the hangars have long since fallen into disrepair. They've collapsed. They've rotted away. And uh, But this statue, this aluminum, beautiful aluminum statue, remains mostly unharmed. Uh, it is called uh, Wings of Change. The statue depicts in aluminum uh, a bunch of birds flying up into the air, and as they fly, they start to sort of transmogrify into airplanes, and then eventually at the very top, a rocket ship going into space. Uh, Sort of suggesting that once upon a time, a time long before most of you were alive, the uh, humanity dreamed of reaching the stars and had achieved that dream. Uh, I mean, I personally, my character does not believe anything like that was Uh, possible. (laughs) Not by a bunch of dumbasses who made yeah. this all to oblivion. Very well. As a uh, Brotherhood scribe looking at this uh, uh, statue here, I'm actually familiar with it. You are familiar with it, yeah. You actually know that it was created uh, way back in the 2000s uh, by an artist named uh, Dow Bloomberg. And it, the uh, interestingly enough, the uh, airport itself, uh, Vance Brand Airport, was named um, by a, a man who was born in, was named after a man who was uh, born in Longmont and who became eventually a space shuttle commander. So as your march progresses, uh, one of the, uh, the jackals looks at you and starts sort of, uh, let's, let's see, who uh, kind of walks up to Zach? And he gives your shoulder a little pinch and uh, licks his lips a little bit. Any the kind of reaction? F- for uh, just uh, just looking forward to uh, to lunch. That's all. Oh, so the plan has switched from ransom, I assume. <laughs> the plans change all the time. He's, he continues to sort of twitch. This in particular, he's like Kuru addled. Like, yeah, he's like, like yeah, he's used a lot of jet recently to sort of stay up and keep watch as you've been traveling. And as raiders like to say, the jet will give you jitters. And that's when, uh, just after your outburst, uh, that's when the leader of the Jackals, a man wearing uh, sort of metal armor on his arms and legs, uh, he's got uh, long kind of greasy hair, um, big guy, big muscular man, uh, indicates that everybody should stop and you all come to a halt. They, uh, one of the Jackals walks up, and it's like, why are we stopping? What's going on? We don't normally stop this, this close uh, to the airport. And uh, Whiplash, raises his hand and says, we're meeting somebody. At which point you see in the distance uh, six figures walking up the highway toward you. They are all uh, interesting silhouettes that most of you would recognize at this point, but not all of you. You can decide if you do or not. But uh, they seem to be dressed in uh, the piecemeal garb of Legion recruits. Oh, shit. Coming up the road. All of them have hunting rifles uh, shouldered in their, uh, nestled in their crook of their arms. And leading them is a man dressed similarly, except for the feathered headdress. 
coming out alongside his headgear. For those of you familiar with the Legion, you recognize him as a... What was that rank again? Not a legate, uh, but... A, vet, uh, a veteran. Oh, a decanus, a decanus. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. if you yeah. asked older Austin, who was super into uh, the Roman legions a good few years ago, <laughs> I would have How often does older Austin think about the Roman Empire? Uh, just as much uh, as any, you know, like, yeah. like younger man, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just about as much as any younger man who has yet to come to terms with his uh, full-on political reawakening. And... <laughs> you see the, uh, the jackals uh, grow quiet as they see the approaching group. Uh, at least one of them appears a little bit confused. However, Whiplash seems unperturbed, and he begins to approach the approaching Decanus. The two, the Decanus breaks away from his people, and uh, they wait mm, a few yards away while he uh, has a quiet conversation with uh, the Jackal leader. Uh, you're not particularly able to overhear the conversation due to their distance. Uh, but then you notice that after a brief uh, handshake, the Decanus approaches you one by one. What's the uh, what's the what's the marching order? Do you think? Who do you think's since you're chain ganged? Who wants to be uh, in what place on the gang? Who is the strongest among us? They should probably be in the front, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I have a strength of four. It's so same it's not me. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh no. I know where I yeah, am. I'm a wimpy little twink. I, I have no muscle. Uh, all right, so I I'm, have a strength of five. <laughs> I'm right. clearly pushing the cart and doing all the actual work here with my uh, sizable strength of eight. Okay. Holy Ooh. shit. Oh. All right. Dude is yoked. Yeah. God damn. I am a strong, hearty, smart dude. Canis, muscle doctor. <laughs> the Decanus walks up to you and uh, looks you up and down. And he, although you can't see the expression on his face, you can see his eyes behind his goggles. They sort of narrow. It says, you there, slave. What's your name? Dr. Benjamin Wilkinson. Uh, my friends call me Benji, but I can see you're not one of them. Describe your character. Uh, he is slightly above average height uh, because he's had food with nutrients nutrients mm -hmm. uh he is currently not wearing his glasses uh because they're broken and uh inside a storage bin mm -hmm. uh he is wearing his traditional traveling clothes uh has a big fuck off mohawk uh because screw you that's why and on his chest is a big tattoo of the cross that is used for the followers of the apocalypse okay the Decanus looks you up and down again, pulls out a small pad of paper, writes something down with a piece of charcoal, and proceeds next down the line. Who does he approach next? If we're going in order of strength, I am probably next at my five. All right. Steps up to you and says, The Vault Dweller. What's your name? Speak up. Uh, Amelia Ash. Uh, and she is uh, about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, somewhere between there. Um, kind of short, curly hair. Just a big, poofy mess of curly hair. Mm -hmm. uh, wearing her typical vault suit with an unbuttoned chef jacket kind of pulled over it. Mm -hmm. Um... And she looks, she has kind of like a little uh, bandana kind of tied right up here on her head. Very Rosie the Riveter mm -hmm. esque. Mm -hmm. Nice. It was. You're timid. Good. Next he approaches. So you two are tied for strength. Mm, yeah. We'll say that you are uh, maybe. Um, shove each other like you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll have him up, go up to you next jacob you walk uh, because you're the one shoving mr dominance <laughs> uh question yeah uh and this i guess ties into the description mm -hmm. did they take my backpack 
It is. They or you're not. Did they not know what it is and didn't really touch it? It is with the things, but it is. Oh, okay. uh, but it is not in a trunk. It's just been sort of set next to the things because they didn't necessarily want to break something valuable. Oh, okay. Go. He looks at you and says, "Do you have any uh, insignia on your outfit, actually?" I do. Yeah, actually, I would have the uh, insignia of the Brotherhood of Steel. Okay. Yes. Brotherhood. Unlike your friends here, we don't necessarily have to go to all this trouble. What's your name, brother? I am Scribe Karakis. I don't expect you to know what that means. So you can call me Carrie. Carrie. We don't need your technology, but we do have use for your body. Trust me when I say that my body is worth far less than what I can offer in technology. <laughs> we'll see. And he then proceeds finally to Zack. You. What's your name? I, I look around like I don't know who he's talking to, but it's very clear I'm the only person he could be talking to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me? Oh, uh, I'm... Who's the uh, loser? You um, look like mine. Um, my name is Franklin Sinclair, sir. You gotta help me. These people, they're absolute lunatics. Oh. They're gonna kill me. You don't know what they're Are gonna they? do. Worse, maybe. What? You don't say. And he is uh, a very much older man wearing a pair of horn-rimmed glasses with a mustache and a vault suit that has a sort of patched cloak over top of it. Or coat, not cloak, sorry. Well, I'd like to help you, son, but uh, I think I'll leave that to the cannibals of Boulder. He walks back to the uh, to Whiplash, the uh, jackal leader. It says, "You can proceed," but uh, he sort of extends his hand. Like mm. the jackal leader pulls out a small bag, and he's like, "Yeah, fine." He puts it in the guy's hand, and uh, then he opens it up, looks inside, mm. sort of pours out a bunch of legion coins. It says, "You know, these aren't as valuable as they used to be." Oh, those are the denarii, right? Denarii, yeah. And they all sort of clink to the ground. Jackal says, what, you don't want your own money? It's like, the Decanus, like, start, begins to, like, lean into him as if he's about to sort of try and pressure him into giving him something that is a bit more valuable to him. When all of a sudden you hear the air crack, especially loud from a great distance away. Uh, the sound reverberates through the still oh, shit. bottom air. <laughs> oh, crap. As the uh, the crack of a rifle heralds what sounds, what passes just between two of you. Like, we hear the shot, and yeah. then there's, like, that hang, like, yeah, for, like, a second, and then... <laughs> exactly. And all of a sudden, the head of the decanus explodes. His body collapses to the ground. The blood from his arteries in his neck, mingling with the denarii that he cast down onto the ground. All of a sudden, it's chaos. Whiplash what doesn't is know what the running. fuck... Yeah. <laughs> Whiplash doesn't know what the fuck is going on. All of us, the, the Legion, the Legionnaire recruits, they don't know what's going on, so they immediately turn their rifles on the Jackals. The Jackals don't know what's going on. All they know is that suddenly the Legion is pointing guns at them, and then there's all of you. So, we're now going to go into combat. <laughs> Punk rock. Wait, we're all chained together, right? You are all chained together. Well, it looks like we have to <laughs> learn how to work together. <laughs> I, exactly. Now, these are long chains. You have some latitude of movement. However, what you won't be able to do um, during this combat is take move actions. All right, so what was all y'all's initiatives again? I can just Everyone except me is an 11, and okay. I'm a 9. <laughs> okay. Everyone, and then you're 9. Awesome. Number 9, Lord. Well, then that means Whiplash is actually just a yeah, fuck you, would love. in Burger King. Fuck okay, yeah. Him. Um, and then the. Uh, hey, if you're not sponsored by Burger King, give them nothing. Burger King foot lettuce. Ah, uh, Burger King foot lettuce. Okay, and the jackals and the legion are both acting on eight. 
There is the, the basic situation, the basic combat situation right now is you are all chained together at the waists. Uh, you all have your little explosive bomb collars around your neck. There is a dead. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Yep. There's a dead Legion Decanus on the ground. Uh, his rifle has fallen beside him, uh, beside his headless body. Uh, and uh, just behind you is the wagon that you've been pulling, which is, you know, full of your stuff. And to give you an idea, the uh, the jackals all appear to be armed uh, with uh, just machetes, whereas the uh, the legion recruits have rifles. So, you know, we'll see how this is going. Are we chained to the cart itself? Uh, no, you are not chained to the cart. You've just been okay. And um. Uh, how much slack is there on the chains? Like, is it enough that there is some on the ground between us? Yeah, you've got not? you've got about you've got about like mm, eight feet be- that you could eight feet of slack to like that you could you could have between yourselves. Gotcha. Which so one of us three like wants the... to go first? Because <laughs> we're all tied. <laughs> Does it have a way of like determining who goes first if you're tied? Uh, so to read from the book, uh, if there's a tie, the GM decides which character or creature goes first. Uh, so, uh, the easiest way to do this, since it's a tie between PCs, is, uh, roll a d20. And, uh, or we could just decide amongst ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, fine with that. If you guys, yeah, if you guys have a plan, like, um, I have an idea for something, but I'd, I'd probably say it on my turn, and I'm pretty sure you guys might have an idea for something. Yeah, because mm-hmm. in theory, we can't communicate our, our battle plans, or we will get shot. <laughs> but, we can on our yeah. turns, though. Yeah. And, will, oh, exactly. Because we are already being shot at. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, because this system uses a fixed initiative um, approach, I do think that it, I personally feel it's fair to allow you to allow you all to sort of kind of decide what order you want to take your actions in on, on, any, given, on any given round. Okay, well, if you guys don't want to make the decision, I will go. All right. Well, right ahead. Be my guest. All right. So, so Carrie, upon uh, realizing that we're uh, getting shot at, mm-hmm. is uh, so he is not the greatest fighter, and so he realizes the situation he's in. Mm-hmm. There is a bomb collar on my neck. Yep. If we do anything, like even if we survive this. He wants this off. Yeah. Like, I mean, even if like you know this this whatever the hell is going on mm-hmm. ends up with our captors still uh, keeping us captive. Yep. He wants this fucking thing off. So um, I want to see if I can s- scurry about mm-hmm. and find something that I can use to dislodge the collar without it blowing my head off. Okay. Give me a um. Pitch me a pitch me a skill. Give me intelligence plus what a skill that you think would be uh, applicable. Um, it is an explosive collar, correct? Yes. Explosives. Intelligence plus explosives. All right. So this. Or actually, will... uh, that's a perception skill, right? Repair is an intelligence one. I could use that. Repair is an intelligence one. Um, and we can actually do any. I believe in this game you can do any combination of ability score and skill technically. Mm. So roll my other. So this is a, well, you would consider this to be like a, a difficult one then, right? Yeah, so you need to generate two successes. Okay. So two, D, two D20s need to roll under a Ooh, hey. Oh. Ooh. Oh. All right. Hooray. Uh, now let's see if there's anything else these do. Roll the dice pool, yep. Combine, yep. Any roll that is a, did you roll any ones? I did not. Okay. Uh, if you ever roll a one, that is a critical success, which is worth two successes. And uh, da, da, da. if you're using a tag skill, then you score a critical success, which for each die, which rolls equal to or less than your skill rating. Uh, did either of those dies roll under your skill rating specifically? So my skill rating uh, is three, actually. Okay, and you rolled a three on one of the die? I did. That counts as a critical success. Uh, so that's three successes, right? Yes. Uh, Fuck yeah. And you didn't roll any 20s, and now what is the critical success do? So, uh, here we go. Whenever you attempt a test, yes. Yeah, so critical success, each critical success, right, generates two successes. Okay, so that's all that does. Okay, cool. Just gets you successes. All right, so in that case, you, uh, being a Brotherhood scribe, are relatively familiar with bomb callers. You know that they are radio controlled. Uh, mm. 
there are some uh, variants that, that once existed, such as uh, shot collars and things for prisons, but almost all the collars you're going to find in the wasteland have, are, are going to be these explosive devices which have a small gunpowder charge. So I do basically like lock picking lawyer. Like yeah, yeah. I go over with, I get the master lock onto their master lock and I pop it open. Like. Yeah, yeah. So you actually know that they uh, that there is a transponder. Um, there should be a transponder for these collars that sort of sets the radius. And uh, you know, after traveling with these people, if it's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in that wagon. Uh, you also, so I yeah. scramble over to the wagon, like dirt, like yeah. dust kicking up and shit, as I'm like, come on, come on, like looking <laughs> where it might be. And then I, I guess like, <laughs> I find like a, like an old master lock or something. Yeah, and, like, exactly. Put it onto it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> and then like, I just, and I pop it. Yep. So yeah, you managed to pop the collar uh, and it, it, it snaps open. And that's when you notice um, that it's not even attempting to uh, discharge its payload, which normally it so, would do. Oh, so it's a manual trigger. Well, normally it might be. Uh, normally these explosives, if there's any attempt to sort of fuck with the collar, will just explode. Mm. Uh, in this case, uh, what you did was pretty risky, but given the circumstances, the best choice you could make. Uh, and it's, it's not doing anything. Hmm. Let me know if this is a bit too much to do on my turn, but just like, uh, upon looking at that, is the charge inert? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Are you fucking kidding me? The yes. duds. Yeah, the light, which, oh, the light. That's the last thing I say yeah. to them. They're duds. <laughs> All right, next. Who's who's gonna go next? Oh, uh, I can go. Okay. Uh, so did Carrie's turn happen, and then I'm going, or is this like all happening at the same time? Uh, you guys, because you're all on the same turn, you're all sort of essentially happening at the same time. Okay. 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 Uh, so did they take everything that we have on us, or is there a possibility that our captors may have missed something? Uh, what might they have missed? A bobby pin. They probably would have missed a bobby pin. Let me do a little, quick little roll. Let me roll. Actually, I'm going to roll to see if they would have missed it because okay. I want to roll their stats. Uh, yeah, I'll say that they missed it. So you, okay. you do have a bobby pin on you. Mm, don't right. ask him where he hit it. Uh, definitely in his hairline because you have a luxury <laughs> pain of balding hair, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> no I, have a, I have a head of hair. Not bald. <laughs> Entirely. Oh, that's why I said balding. So to draw an item, uh, in this case your bobby pin, that will be a uh, your minor action. I'm fine with that. Can I use my major action to pick the lock that is around my waist, keep me in this chain? Yes, that will be a uh, agility plus lock pick check. All right. Given the circumstances, I'm also going to say difficulty of three. Okay. 20 versus 9. Uh, I got a 4 and a 1. Oh yeah, you definitely succeeded, because the 1 itself is, is a critical success as well. Alright, will... I will take the bobby pin. I've okay. been hiding underneath my tongue for probably days now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, unlock the chain around my waist. Alright. Uh, it, it falls to the ground. And as, as it falls to the ground, you know, you hear... Uh, uh, Carrie, uh, you know, that's the same moment, right? When it falls to the ground, that's the same moment that Carrie's like, they're duds! Which brings us to Latula. So, Amelia, being brand new to this whole world, dragged mm. fresh out the vault by yep. these people, mm -hmm. is freaking the fuck out. Okay. Like, uh, oh my god, upon, they're shooting at everyone! <laughs> uh, upon seeing the head explode, she immediately vomits. Okay. Um, and... Upon noticing that the her captors seem distracted, is there a rock within reach, like a decent-sized rock? Oh yeah, there's a number of rocks. They're He's gonna grab that rock and try to smash asphalt. the chain with it. Okay. Um, yeah, you take. That's a... all she can think to do <laughs> in her panic. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, give me an, a give me a melee attack. Um, it's actually, believe it or not, I'm gonna have to scroll down here in the rule book, but. Um, Ooh, fight rule? Sort of. There's a uh, handy rock is a weapon no way. <laughs> in the rules. 
Uh, so give me a unarmed uh, check. In that, in this case, uh, it says so. Uh, unarmed. Unarmed, which is. Uh, is Handy Rock, or would that be uh, a melee weapon? It is a melee weapon, but the skill it uses is unarmed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Is a... I'm sorry, I tried. <laughs> okay. I mean, my strength is a five. Right. So, like, roll below five. Oh, because you don't even have unarmed? No, oh, I have melee done. because I use knives. Mm -hmm. I have a stabby stab. Yep. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, or, actually, in this case... Or... In this case, do melee because the handy rock. Oh. It's saying uh, unarmed, I think, because it's meant to be thrown. But uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So rolling melee now that makes it roll below an eight. Yes. Oh, both oh. fails. Okay, wasn't meant to be. So yeah, you you smash oh. the uh, the rock down onto the the thick metal chain, and uh, the rock uh, cracks in half. He just kind of stares at it with her hands shaking and is basically frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And she is also very clearly hyperventilating. Yep. <laughs> and as I'm you as you like, oh, oh, and as you're like staring at like this rock that's like cracked in your hands, uh, you know, you then you see like just out of your peripheral vision the chains uh, drop to the ground from one of your uh, forced companions. Then you hear the other one carry shout, "They're duds." Would she even know that? Would they have? Would their captors have mentioned that these are bomb collars? Or would she even know that that's what that is? They would have told you. They would have told you okay. when they put it on. They would have been like, you know, run too far, try to escape, even with your friends, and your heads will blow up. Blah blah ha ha. You know. Okay. That sort of intimidating shit. Uh, yeah. Upon hearing that, she just kind of grabs at the collar, but she's not doing anything to it. Just mm -hmm. ending her turn. <laughs> okay. It is now uh, Whiplash's turn. And he immediately sees the uh, the legionaries draw their weapons, and turns and uses his move uh, to throw himself behind the uh, the wagon and takes cover as he draws his ten millimeter pistol. And those are his actions, uh, which brings us now to Austin. So is Whiplash within range of? Can I move and attempt to disarm? You're probably all still pretty close. So I would say that eight feet of slack could let you get around the cart. Yeah. All right. So is that something I'm allowed to do? Because I move haven't. Would we all feel him moving that far out? Like it kind of took us a little bit. Yeah. Like he's because he's at the front and Whiplash is behind the wagon, which means you would actually see him like running past, moving past you. And so yeah, and then that chain is going to kind of tug on tug on uh, whoever was next in line, uh, which I so be believe was Latula. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, which is fine because yeah. she's vomiting all of. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. You just kind of get like dragged. In. <laughs> yeah, you get a little bit on your lap. Yep. No, please don't drag me through my own vomit. <laughs> oh, stay standing. Oh, vault be fine. Good thing vault suits are durable. And uh, made of, I think, super leather or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's perfectly clean. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. So yeah, I am going to probably just tackle him. Okay. Or, or start trying to move a gun so he doesn't shoot me in the face. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah. I'm going to use my unarmed attack. Mm -hmm. So your move, yeah, is your minor action. Oh, but and, oh, you're using your unarmed. Yeah, perfect. So yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I am good at a few things, and uh, throwing hands is one of them. That's right. So to actually initiate some combat, I'm going to roll my 2d20. Okay. I'd fail both of them. Oh! No. Oh, real bad. I I think uh, I'm going to double check, oh, no. because I don't want to start uh, my day off in point-blank range. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, misfortune! You may spend one or more luck points to reroll dice in your dice pool. Okay, there you go. I'm going to spend a luck point to reroll okay. a dice. All right. Number of dice is two. Oh, oh, that's that's significantly oh. better. <laughs> I got a Ooh. critical success. Okay. And a regular success. So okay, so you do successfully hit his uh, his right arm, his hand where he's holding the gun. Mm -hmm. Now you roll a number of d6, uh, listed by the weapon damage rating, plus any bonuses. Uh, oh, so that is actually a lot of damage. I got a 6, which is 
two damage plus an effect. Yep. And two tubes, which are both two damage apiece. Yeah, so that is Let's go. six yeah. damage as I, I don't know, karate kick this gun hand. Yeah. So you, uh, so you, yeah, you, uh, you hit his, uh, you kick his arm, his gun arm, uh, very firmly, and he gives out a cry uh, as it is essentially crippled, dropping the ten millimeter pistol to the ground. Uh, you don't kill him, uh, but he looks very hurt. Uh, if this were the video game, you know, you would see that that taste little zero percent next to that. Lid. I mean, I, I don't want to kill him anyways. I uh, I don't like I I, I don't kill people. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, that's right. You're a doctor. Oh, I'm a doctor. You do no harm. You took an oath. Yeah. Okay, the opposite oh, no. of killing people. Impact. I I do harm on people who are inflicting harm on me mm -hmm. because uh, we're not dumb. But uh, if I can avoid killing folk, I'm going to avoid killing. Folk. Yeah. All right. And so to be fair, he did put a bomb collar. He did, and he he ate. Yeah. He ate the friendliest one among you. I mean, that guy was so nice. You know, he made just left with he made the long, horrible march worthwhile in, in his own weird way. We, we didn't like Greg. Let's be real. We, we didn't no. like Greg. <laughs> I, mean, I liked Greg. I Greg thought he was Greg. Fine. The jackals definitely liked him. Guy uh, kept going on about like, oh, there's a silver lining to everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he was just like the adoring fan. Yeah, the dude was getting butchered. He was like, oh, we'll circle of life. Oh, it's okay, whatever I can do to help, you know. Desperate times, yeah. Desperate <laughs> times, everybody. You know, this reminds me of a story they finally just chopped his head off. Yeah, I was like, I, oh my god, shut up! Yes. You know, they say men and people will take a mile, but I'll gladly give you my mile. <laughs> Damn. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so you, you, you break his elbow, he drops his gun, he gives a, a scream uh, from behind the wagon, and uh, that will take us to... The Jackals and the Legion. So I am not going to roll for a 6v4 shootout. <laughs> I'm going to narrate it. Um, so they begin shooting at each other. Well, the uh, the uh, Legion begins shooting at uh, the Jackals, and they are a lot more uh, efficient and well-trained than the Jackals are, who are strung out on cams at the moment. However, uh, there is uh, one, the one guy who was tweaked out on Jet does manage to sort of like run and like dodge bullets. Um, <laughs> like he just starts running at them like with his, uh, with his machete uh, up high uh, and they are missing him every time, uh, moving unnaturally fast. Uh, and he manages to sort of sink. He gets right up to yeah, the real gremlin energy. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he just like sinks that machete like into the neck of one of the uh, one of the legion recruits. Takes a bite, you know. <laughs> yep, exactly. And while, meanwhile, the other jackals are getting gunned down mercilessly, uh, one by Snack one. Snack mid fight, you know. Yeah, you just hear like you hear like three three rifle reports, and like each jackal just drops to the ground. Stabbing is hungry work. Stabbing is very hungry work. I mean, it it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as they are uh, sort of looking at themselves and being like, oh shit, what's going on? Uh, all of a sudden, there's another loud crack from that distant area to the, uh, the west. And um, another, and one of the, uh, one of the other uh, legionaries drops dead immediately. Oh shit! As he takes a bullet through the heart. We're just doing this through the heart, and he's too late. Well, I'm glad they're not shooting at us. That's yeah. all that matters to me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that brings us to the uh, top of the next round. Hey, the sniper Boone, are you here? <laughs> Wouldn't they that... took his hat? He took their lives. <laughs> he's been following <laughs> them across the wasteland <laughs> to get his hat back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hear me out. Which one of you there's fuckers an, took it? There's a non-zero percent chance that it is Boone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, don't give me ideas. Now it is. <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, copyright claim. Uh, yeah, it's a Boone. It's it's a it's a it's a Boone knockoff. Um, but oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's Coon. It's, yeah. it's Moon. Oh it's, yeah. Uh, Jacob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Boom. It's um, Dune. Yeah, Dune. Exactly. Dune. Uh, so now that would be there are so the jackals are all dead except for the one who is has his machete in someone's neck, and uh, there are now uh, five uh, Legion veterans, or not veterans. Sorry, Jesus Christ, recruits. <laughs> the five uh, Legion veterans. veterans. Yeah. You're all dead. I yeah, just no. haven't. Me. Battle <laughs> hardened. All of them like fought alongside yeah. Lanius. You know? Yeah. And, they, right. and they're like, we're here to. <laughs> we killed a lot of pseudo, dogs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, they uh, they are there are five of them, uh, and we are at the top of the round again. Do you guys want to act in the same order, or uh, how do you approach? You do that, you know. I, I'm only saying yeah, that because be it, it would be me that goes first, so, right? Know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Attention, horror. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um. So let's see. I see. The, the bomb is inert, right? But this was actually an explosive device, right? Correct, yeah. Um, you don't know I'm a demolitions expert. You are. And I see an opportunity. Okay. So I, think I, 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 I look I over. I I yeah? <laughs> yeah? I look over um, at the uh, legionaries that are here, mm. and I, I think it's time to cause a little bit of chaos. Mm. Um, could I be able to make... I'm just gonna say I'm gonna make a grenade yeah. um, out of um, the collar, or would I need someone else's? Like, do I need to help uh, someone else's out to pop it out and then like fix it together? You can. Um, I will allow. You don't need a, another a, another collar to, uh, to, okay. to do this. Um, you're a you're a brotherhood scribe for crying out loud. Uh, mm. You know what you're doing with technology, especially sort of very rudimentary technologies like uh, you know like a like a bomb collar. Mm. Uh, so yeah, if I would ask for you to make a, an intelligence plus prepare test, or explosives, you think? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, let's say intelligence plus explosives. I do have both though, so I'm good with that. Yeah. Let's do explosives. Oh, it's two crits. Ooh, okay. oh, damn. Cool. All right. Well, that's going to take you over the three that I had set in my head. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I got four. <laughs> so you managed to sort of you you can you managed to like. Just immediately, you know, you kind of break off the uh, the panel that would be on, would have been on the inside, uh, revealing sort of the wiring of the uh, of the activation mechanism that, that triggers the the charge to explode. You do see that the charge itself is intact, uh, and that it really was just a loose connection um, from from age and corrosion that you're able to sort of push back in to place. Uh, it wouldn't hold up uh, under you know extended use; it would come loose again. But uh, it's it's you know a little bubble gum, and it's uh, it's 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 there. It's uh, it'll it'll stay in place long enough for a good throw probably. And immediately the light on it starts the light on it starts blinking again. Oh shit! Like like the charge is gonna go off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So hot potato. I got this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got this fucking explosive device mm -hmm. that's ready to blow at any moment yeah. in my hands, and then I kind of aim over. Would I be able to throw it in this turn? Yes, you can uh, make a... So, using the skill check to fix it was one major action. Uh, you okay. can spend uh, two AP to do another major action, uh, which would be your oh, attack roll, in this case, a, a thrown weapon attack, or a thrown explosive attack, which is perception plus explosives. How do I get AP? Uh, you should just have it. But let's, let's double check here. Oh, the starting AP is equivalent to the amount of players. Action points are okay. then generated by exceeding skill checks with additional successes. Okay, so yeah. So oh, you have uh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. So since you went oh. up by one, you're spending at least one AP that yeah. you oh, yeah. generated. Yeah. Oh, and then and then last time too, I would have two then, right? Yes. Yeah. So I have enough to be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so then you're gonna make your uh, your perception plus explosives. Okay. Check. Shit. Yay. Man, I could have ended that one greater. <laughs> <laughs> so one miss and one crit. Okay, so two. So that's going to uh, beat the defense of uh, really any of them. Uh, they're in a radius. You know, they're all clustered together. Uh, uh, blast targets multiple ones in the same uh, area, right? Yes. Uh, let me double check here. Let me scroll down to explosives. Uh, what Do you want to use the baseball grenade profile? It's like the basic so. profile. Yeah. I think that's the. I think also, because I have one, so it'd yeah. be really easy to. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good choice. <laughs> okay. 
So if this is uh, one, two, three, four, six total. Mm -hmm. Great, so what six. are the differences between the little blast symbol and the little face? Uh, so the little blast symbol is just straight damage. The face is damage plus uh, damage effects. So if you oh. had a weapon that did bleeding damage, if you rolled the uh, the face, you do uh, the bleeding damage. Unfortunately, it looks like the baseball grenade doesn't have any effect. It's just the damage, so yeah. it would just be six damage then. Oh, okay. wait, one second. I think I might actually have an effect. Okay. So because I am a demolitions expert, mm -hmm. the attack gains the vicious damage effect. Oh, okay. And okay, so it gets two of those. So it's a vicious two, right? Yeah, it, it inflicts plus one damage for each effect rolled. So some damage. So yeah, two rolled. additional damage effects. Well, two additional damages. So that's eight, right? I think so. So let's see here. Oh uh, shit! That should be eight damage each. Uh, two, and then let me look up last one here. Just in sure. case if there's like any damage fall off or anything, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to be like because I know there's. First, but that's for guns. Um, last, whatever the radius. It's eight all. All right. Let's yeah. Go. So uh, yeah, yeah. So you throw the um, you throw the the collar, and as it mm. it begins to beep loudly, as it sort of leaves the uh, the radius of the transponder that was in the wagon, and manages. Perhaps this was its destiny, as as a, <laughs> as a head exploding bomb collar. This is the moment that it had been waiting for all of its life. Uh, these 200 plus years uh, of existence, but its timer turns over just as its fall puts it at head level with the uh, the various with the uh, the Legion recruits and then it just dies. and... Wait, so when they all took cover like in the same area mm -hmm. and it lands like right between... <laughs> yeah, in their formation. And uh, because it wasn't on a head, the the charge itself is is you know unimpeded by uh, by weak flesh, and so it kind of breaks the collar apart, sending shrapnel along with the explosive damage into their into their throats. Ooh. And oh. uh, right, one guy gets a piece of the eye, and uh, they all are like they all kind of stand there for a second, and then like one of them reaches up to his neck, like looks at the others, and then they fall down and uh, wait holy shit are they, they all dead yeah they all they all take eight damage and they all die so, holy shit. god holy damn god. uh in fact <laughs> like grenade gang yeah. like the in weirdly enough though uh weirdly enough the uh the one jackal with the machete uh the jet head is still standing uh and he looks around looks down at them considers for a moment what just happened and just takes off running down the road <laughs> as fast as he possibly can. <laughs> and uh, and that'll be uh, that'll be it for combat. Um, oh god, enough chems in me it. for this shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna be a fucking recurring character. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ending it just like this. I've got a oh, name now. He's gonna be on <laughs> uh, So we're gonna end the episode there uh, as this jackal runs down down airport highway to the south uh the direction in which you had been heading uh leaving you all there um to pick up the pieces uh of what just happened and to figure out what strange guardian angel with a sniper rifle was helping you even though there's wait what's his I face know. is still alive behind the cart with his broken arm he is still alive with his broken arm we're gonna end it there bye <laughs> I'm leaving us in suspense. Yes, yeah, suspense. Uh, so unlike me as a as a as an old school AD and D DM, I'm like cliffhangers. What's <laughs> uh, cliffhangers are just great for radio. Oh yeah, they're you know, they're, they're hell good. Um, so you all see it because of the light glinting off of it as it comes out of the woods toward you is like a, an iBot and it's just kind of hovering down the road or up the road toward you just kind of bouncing the moment you start patting him down he spits in your face I touch his arm do you think this is the worst I've ever dealt with probably not but this could be a lot easier on all of us just give me what I want I'm gonna pick up that hunting rifle and just aim it at whiplash and be like don't you 
fucking try anything. 